Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I'm going to discuss cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid is also called CSF, liquor cerebrospinalis, is a clear, colorless, transparent tissue fluid that occupies the subarachnoid space in the brain. Cerebral ventricle, spinal canal, more specifically between the arachnoid and pia layer of the meninges. It is an ultrafiltrate of blood plasma normally. CSF does not contain red blood cell and at the most four white blood cell per microliter may be present. It is an approximately isotonic solution and act as a cushion or buffer for the brain. What are the function of CSF? CSF has both physical and metabolic functions. It is a shock absorber, a mechanical buffer, act as cushion between the brain and the cranium, act as a reservoir and regulate the content of the cranium, serve as a medium for nutritional exchange in CNS, transport hormone and hormone releasing factors, remove the metabolic was product through absorption. Cushing function of the cerebrospinal fluid. A major function of the cerebrospinal fluid is to cushion the brain within the solid world. The brain and the cerebrospinal fluid have about the same specific gravity only about 4% differ so that the brain simply float in the fluid. Therefore, a blow to the head, if it is not too intense, move the entire brain simultaneously with the skull, causing no one portion of the brain to be momentarily countered by the blow. Counter coup. When a blow to the head is extremely severe it may not damage the brain on the side of the head where the blow is struck but on the opposite side this phenomena is known as counter coup common side of brain injury the pole and the inferior surface of the frontal and temporal lobe where the brain come in contact with bony protuberance in the base of the skull are often the site of injury and contusions, also called bruises. After a severe blow to the head, if the contusion occur on the same side as the impact injury, it is coup injury. If it occur on the opposite side, the contusion is a counter coup injury. The total CSF volume. The entire cerebral cavity, including the brain and spinal cord, is a Capacity of about 1600 to 1700 milliliter. About 150 milliliter of this capacity is occupied by the cerebrospinal fluid and the remainder by the brain and cord. This fluid is present in the ventricle of the brain, in the cisternae around the outside of the brain, and in the subarachnoid space around both the brain and the spinal cord. All these chambers are connected with one and other and pressure of the fluid is maintained at a surprisingly constant level. Formation. Cerebrospinal fluid is formed at a rate of about 500 milliliter each day which is three or four times as much as the total volume of the fluid in the entire cerebrospinal fluid system. About two-thirds of this fluid originate from the choroid plexus in the four ventricles, mainly in the two lateral ventricles. Additional some small amount of fluid secreted by the ependymal surface of all the ventricle and by the arachnidal membrane, and a small amount come from the brain itself through the periventricular space that surround the blood vessels passing through the brain. These are the ventricle, the lateral ventricle, the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle and this fluid is actually produced in these ventricle. Flow and absorption of the 
cerebrospinal fluid. The fluid secrete in the lateral ventricle pass first into the third ventricle. This is the lateral ventricle and this is the third ventricle. First it is formed in the lateral ventricle and then pass to the third ventricle by foramen a mondro. Minute amount of fluid from the third ventricle is added to this fluid then it flow down the aqueduct into the fourth ventricle where still minute amount is added. This is aqueduct and from the third ventricle the fluid through this aqueduct the fluid flow down to the fourth ventricle. Flow and absorption of cerebrospinal fluid. Finally, the fluid falls out of the fourth ventricle through three small openings, two lateral foramen of Lusaka and midline foramen of Magendae, entering the cisterna magna. A fluid spare that lies behind the medulla and beneath the cere cerebellum. There are three channels by which the cerebrospinal fluid pass from the fourth ventricle into the cisterna, the two lateral channels which are called foramen of Lusaka, the medial channel which is called foramen of Magendae, and this area is called the cisterna. Cisterna is actually a flat tube. The cisterna Magendae is continuous with the subarachnoid space. This is cisterna Magendae, and it continues with the subarachnoid space space that surround the entire brain and spinal cord. The cerebrospinal fluid then flow upward from the cisterna magna through the subarachnoid space surrounding the cerebrum. This is cerebellum and then it called the whole cerebrum. From here the fluid flow arachnoidal villi that project into the large sagittal venous sinus and other venous sinuses of the cerebrum. Then this fluid flow to the sagittal sinuses. Thus any extra fluid empties into the venous blood through pore of these villi. Choroidal plexus. The choroidal plexus is a heavily flower-like growth of blood vessel covered by a thin layer of epithelial cell. This is a heavily flower like structure and it is covered by a thin layer of epithelial cell. This plexus project each lateral ventricle, the posterior portion of the third ventricle and the roof of the fourth ventricle. They project into the lateral ventricle, third ventricle and the floor of the fourth ventricle. Secretion of choroidal plexus. Secretion of fluid into the ventricle by the choroidal plexus depend mainly on active transport of sodium ion through the epithelial cell lining the outside of the plexus. These are the epithelial cell lining for the plexus and it is by the active transport of sodium. You can see that the sodium is actively transported to the from the blood through the epithelium to the CSF. The sodium ion in turn full along large amount of chloride ion as well as because the positive charge of the sodium ion attract the chloride ion which is negatively charged. And the sodium take chloride weight into the cerebrospinal fluid. These together increase the quantity of a smaller G cerebrospinal fluid which then cause almost immediately osmosis of water through the membrane thus providing the, the fluid of the secretion. The sodium and the chloride into the cerebrospinal fluid, the osmology in, increase ran the water into the cerebrospinal fluid. Less important transport process moves small amount of glucose into the cerebrospinal fluid and both potassium and bicarbonate ions out of the cerebrospinal fluid into the capillaries. Here with sodium and chloride some amount of glucose is also transported into the cerebrospinal fluid. Bicarbonate and potassium are transported outside from the cerebrospinal fluid to, to the blood. Therefore, the resulting 
characteristic of the cerebrospinal fluid become as palvin osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is approximately equal that of plasma sodium ion concentration also approximately equal to that of plasma chloride ion about 15% greater than in plasma and potassium ion approximately 40% less and glucose about 30% less absorption of cerebrospinal fluid through the arachnoid villi arachnoid villi are microscopic finger like inward projection of the arachnoid membrane into the venous sinuses these are the finger like projection into the venous sinuses these villi form microscopic structure called arachnoidal granulation that can be seen protruding into the sinuses these are the granulation and they are protruding into the sinuses this is the electron microscope structure of the arachnoid villi the endothelial cell covering the villi have vesicular passages directly through the body of the cell large enough to allow relative free flow here you can see that there are passages directly in the cell that allow free flow of cerebrospinal fluid dissolve protein molecules even particle as large as red and white blood cell into the venous blood cerebrospinal fluid pressure the normal pressure in the cerebrospinal fluid system when one is lying in horizontal position average 130 mm of water or 10 mm of mercury although this may be as low as 65 mm of water or as high as 195 mm of water even in normal healthy person very vascular space is cerebrospinal and cerebrospinal fluid very vascular spaces and cerebrospinal fluid the large artery and vein of the brain lie on the surface of the brain but their end penetrate inward carrying with them a layer of pia mater the membrane that cover the brain this is the large vessel which lie on the surface of the brain but their end or branches penetrate the brain matter and they carry the pia mater with with the pia is only loosely adhered to the vessel so that the perivascular exists between it and each vessel this is the pia mater which enter the brain matter along with the vessel but this is not attached with the vessel there is a, a space between the vessel and the pia mater and this is called perivascular space the space around the vessel therefore perivascular space follow both the arteries and the vein into the brain as far as the arteriole and venol go lymphatic function of the perivascular space because of no true lymphatic are present in the brain tissue excess protein in the brain tissue leave the brain flowing with fluid through the perivascular space into the subarachnoid space any unwanted protein when they leave the brain tissue they flow in this perivascular space in which the cerebrospinal fluid is present on reaching the subarachnoid space the protein then flow with the cerebrospinal fluid to be absorbed through the arachnoidal villi into the large cerebral sinuses this fluid reach the arachnoid villi or sinus then these proteins are drained to the these sinuses into the large cerebral veins therefore perivascular space specialize lymphatic system for the brain this perivascular space play the role of lymphatic system for the brain you can see this is the vessel which enter the brain tissue carry pia mater with it and there is a space which is called perivascular space in which the csf flow 
and it play the role of lymphatic system and remove all the was product from the brain and bring it to the venous sinuses. In addition to transporting fluid and protein, perivascular spaces transport extraneous particulate matter out of the brain. For instance, whenever infection occur in the brain, dead white blood cell and other infectious debris are carried away through the perivascular space. Regulation of cerebral spinal fluid pressure by the arachnoid villi. The arachnoid villi function like wells that allow cerebral spinal fluid and its content to flow readily into the blood of the venous sinuses while not allowing blood to flow backward into the opposite direction. They allow only the flow of cerebrospinal fluid into the sinuses but from sinuses don't allow blood to enter the cerebrospinal fluid. Normally this well action of the villi allow cerebrospinal fluid to being to flow into the blood when cerebrospinal fluid pressure is about 1.5 mm of mercury greater than the pressure of the blood in the venous sinuses. Then if the cerebrospinal fluid pressure rises still higher, the well open more widely so that under normal condition the cerebrospinal fluid pressure allow almost never rise more than a few millimeter of mercury higher than the pressure in the cerebral venous sinuses. Conversely, in disease state, the villi sometimes become blocked by a large particulate matter by fibrosis or by excess of blood cell that have leak into the cerebrospinal fluid in brain diseases. Such blockage can cause high cerebrospinal fluid pressure as follows. MCQs as I told you in the previous lecture the system has changed to MCQ so I am going to add some MCQs to every lecture. So this lecture also contain MCQs. The first MCQ is the main cell type that produce CSF is the four options. You can choose the current and write the answer in comment box. The main anatomical structure which produce CSF is called again four options choose the one and write it in the comment box the lateral ventricle are connected to the third ventricle via from choose one option from this and the lateral and medial aperture drain the fourth ventricle into select one of from these options and please write the answer in comment box so thank you see you in the next lecture